Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. I tell you what, it has been ages. It feels like it's been ages since I put out an actual shop update video. Uh, many of you guys know who've been following me. Um, I uh, installed some lights on my house, and that just let one thing led to another, led to another, and until I entered into what was I called the money pit. If you've ever seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about because everything is two weeks out, right? Well. Um, I've reached now where I think I'm in purgatory, right? The uh, cabinets that I ordered, you know, they, um, uh, some of them were damaged, and so I'm waiting on a replacement order, and uh, they're talking like October 1st. So it's kind of depressing. I was really hoping to get that remodeled on. There's still quite a, a lot to do, and it's setting me out later. But now I tell you what, last weekend I said, you know, I'm, I got to do something for some sanity. And uh, so, uh, if, if you follow my channel, you know a while back that I built this uh, oil burner, right? Uh, it's based, it's, it's David somebody's. I'll try to remember to link it in um, in the description below. But I built this oil burner, and I think I had had it burning on some um, diesel fuel. But I thought I would push it up into a furnace and you know get get it set up, and and I done that. And I ran into some problems. I ran into some uh, uh, airflow issues for the combustion fan. I ran into some fitting issues from where the burner tube ran into the tweer. Uh, it took about 45 minutes to melt uh, six pounds, five or six pounds uh, of aluminum, a crucible, a crucible full of aluminum. Uh, it was just more a, a comedy of errors, really. Uh, my pipe crucible uh, sprung a leak and and uh, uh and just one thing to another but i need to give a big shout out to chirpy chirpy uh um i was talking with him about it he uh, showed me how to uh or advised me how to adjust the uh, burner uh for optimal fuel usage and i'd done that and uh, it was night and day after that so now i didn't video any of that i really wish i would have uh probably been more educational for me uh, to let some of the some of you uh, guys out there who do a lot of casting to see you know advise me and see what I'm doing wrong, uh, but I didn't. But I do have some pictures, and I'll post some pictures of that. So uh, what about the shop? Has anything been going on here? Well, not a whole lot. The last time I was in the shop, uh, really, I started on um, the Titch hand pump to make a boiler test rig for the, um, uh, for the little Kenneth Wells stationary engine. And uh, I had uh, decided that I wanted to get some model engineering taps and dies uh, for that. And then COVID come in and just the world just went crazy. I guess I can say. But I do have a few things that I want to share and uh, let me bring you over here to the bench and we'll get right into it. So I started building this, uh, the frame of what's going to be a little hand pump uh, back before all the COVID stuff started out, right? And I, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and use the taps and the dies that they called for. Because if I want to get into model engineering, I might as well try to stick with you know sort of standardized sizes and that sort of thing is it does it necessary probably not i probably could have found something close enough but yeah how it is 
So I contacted a company or emailed or made an order from a company on the internet called Tracy Tools, right? Now Tracy uh, Tools supply, um, you know, tabs, dies, reamers, all kinds of different stuff, right? Uh, they're, they're in England and uh, that's, and you see their contact information here and that's who I ordered from. And uh, I waited and I waited and I waited because um, as soon as I made the order, very, very, very shortly after that is when uh, all the delivery restrictions and all the weird stuff was going on. So when I finally got my order, it came like this here and it said rewrapped in the USA, right? And I thought, well, uh-oh, I opened it up and really all I found was the catalog and the invoice. No taps, no dies. Well, you know, I can't blame Tracy Tools for that, but I did contact him and said, hey, I don't know if there's uh, any insurance or anything like that, but this is what happened. Just thought I would let you know. And uh, the guy, I, I can't remember his name. I got, I got him in an email. Um, he says, hey, don't, don't worry about it. We'll send you some more, right? Now, look, they didn't have to do that. It wasn't their fault that the package come open or whatever, right? But... Uh, Sure enough, they uh, sent my order, uh, resent my order, and this time um, they they really taped the package, right? And I'm I'm glad they did because uh, that's not going to come apart. So that took care of that, and I would just recommend to that company if you're sending it out, take the crap out of the envelope so that they can't uh, open up or or whatever. Somebody would have to uh, deliberately tamper with it. So what I ordered were quarter by 40 um, taps and 316 by 40 taps with each of the plug and the bottoming tap and the taper tap and the dies. So that's that's what I ordered and, and that's what I'm going to use uh, moving forward uh, making the uh, hand pump and when we get back onto that. But anyway, um, this is not an official endorsement of Tracy Tools, but look, um, the customer service is stellar. You can better. Uh, you can be rest assured that uh, when I order again, I'm ordering from these folks. These guys are great. So, all right. Well, let me uh, bring in the next thing and uh, talk about it. So here's the next thing I want to talk about the shop. So Chirpy, he um, he come across a whole bunch of these 3AT collets, and uh, he says, you know, they won't fit my lathe. They're really kind of small for my lathe, and want to know if I'd be interested. And I said, sure. So I got a pretty wide selection of these collets from uh, Chirpy and uh, I'm going to try to make a, um, a, a collet block for these to go into to go into my lathe uh, unless any of you guys got one that uh, you might have for sale or something for or for an Atlas 10 uh, let me know and in addition he uh, this was in the uh, <laughs> the box when he shipped it it's a half inch by 32 uh, thread typical model engineering thread so thank you Chirpy for that I'm going to try to put these to good uses, uh, good use, and looking forward to that. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. And there's quite a selection of sizes from 16th all the way up to, uh, I believe that's uh, 7 16ths. Uh, I think this is a half, yeah, half inch. So from quarter, uh, from 1 16th up to a half inch, there's quite a few. There's only a couple missing. There's a couple duplicates. So Chirpy, thanks a lot for that. All right, so let me bring in the next thing. So many of you guys know that I'm um, redoing a Burke number no. four horizontal milling machine, and I've been sort of wringing my hands about how am I going to power this. Uh, well, my son came to my rescue, and he found this uh, three-phase, uh, one and a half horse motor, um, 1725 RPM Dayton uh, motor, uh, that I think will work real well in. Uh, driving the mill and I, I think what I'll do is I'll just get a 220 to three phase converter so I got speed control. We'll probably go ahead and use some belt speeds too but um, or you know the option to to run some different belt speeds. So anyway uh, this is awesome Zachary thank you so much for finding this son. Um, that's awesome so hopefully we'll uh, be back on this project before long. It is all painted and it's ready to go back together. Uh, again, it's just like most anything else, finding time. So, but now we're one step closer. We do have a motor for it. So, let me bring in the next item. Well, this might not look like much, right? Um, this is two pieces of three sixteenths uh, by one inch flat 
that uh, I riveted together and actually what I wanted to do is give a shout out to Rusty Knox um, for his little riveting um, video that was very helpful along with Peter at PGS is his video on riveting now I cheated I didn't rivet both sides this is bolt and I hot rivet it but now so what is this right, it's a scissor joint that's going to be used for my number A6 crucible or my A6 crucible and so what I've done here is I've built or I've cut a couple pieces of strap and bent it so that it'll fit around here so I can make some lifting lifting tongs right and then of course these would be the these would be the uh, scissor portion of the tongs and then on the top I'm going to weld some uh, half inch uh, black pipe so if you're interested in that let me know the um, I've had this crucible for quite a long time and I thought well since I sprung a leak on my pipe crucible maybe it's about time that uh, I put this crucible to use um, I also have another smaller uh, clay oh it's a graphite uh, crucible that was given to me by uh, Richard from making something from nothing that I need to make some smaller tongs and and start using these things so I'm very interested in um, getting my furnace back together I have several pounds of scrap aluminum uh, to use and that's kind of you know where I need to to be and and eventually you know get some stuff cast up so that I can do some other projects so um, all right so I got something else here I'm going to share and I'll bring that in okay so you might be asking yourself well, what's that <laughs> well Back in the day, I built a Gingery gas-fired crucible furnace, right? And um, the other day, when, uh, last weekend when I had my, fire, or my furnace up and running, I had a, a fan, a, uh, exhaust fan from like an HVAC, you know, from a furnace, house furnace, that I was using, and I hooked that up to a dimmer switch, right? But the problem was, I think it's shaded pole motor and... Uh, I had no real control over um, the volume of air. So I thought what I would do is, uh, this is this fan I built back in the day and it looks a little rough and I'm, I'm gonna go through it. If I have to, I will uh, replace this burner tube, which you see got completely melted uh, <laughs> back when I was running it. I'll replace that with a net, an adapter that will go into the burner. And uh, I think I'll use this. Now this, uh, this thing really kicks out the air, but you see I have a damper here that I can, I can control it. Uh, I did have an issue, a little bit of an issue running this fan about uh, sealing it up. So I think what I'll do is I'll pull it apart, um, make sure everything is still mechanically sound, even though I know it's, it's rusted. Um, but I think I might go and try that. Anybody uh, have any uh, opinions or you think this is too much. I don't know if you're familiar with a Gingri gas-fired uh, furnace. So uh, if that's uh, too much or if you think it'd be all right. And finally, in closing, I want to talk about this. Uh, you know, Randy Richards uh, put these out on Thingiverse. Randy Richards in the shop and their little uh, oil uh, containers. I tell you, I printed one out. This thing is, this thing works great. I've dropped it a few times, barely lost any oil out of it. Uh, the only drawback is I only printed one. I probably should print one for every machine. So if you get out there and if you got a 3D printer, um, I think you'll find that pretty helpful. So, all right. Well, I think that's about it. Let me uh, let me set the camera up here and we'll we'll close. Well, guys, I realize there's not been a whole lot going on in the shop. Um, I'm hoping that changes. I just want to get through um, this remodel. I still have a lot to do. Um, that's kind of what I'm focusing on. Uh, I'm going to be out of pocket here for a couple of weeks. It's uh, my wife and I wedding anniversary. We're going to go spend some uh, time together in, in one of the state parks, you know, a few days. And, um, but look, I've not forgot uh, about you guys, and, and hopefully you haven't forgot about me. Um, we're going to get this mill together. We're going to make some chips. We're going to finish on with the Kenneth Well stationary engine and make the boiler test rig. Uh, I've got um, some uh, another project that I want to do is going to require some castings and and that sort of thing. Uh, and and then you know I started out this year and said, hey, this 2020 has got to be the year that I get some of the stuff off my plate. Um, boy, I, am I eating those words, right? So there's things that I like to get off my plate still. So that might go into uh, 2021, I guess. But you know, 
getting my Burke mill running and, and finishing up some of these loose projects, that's a priority. Uh, including uh, a couple plaques that I promised my wife a long time ago I would cast. And I'll share that experience with you guys. So hey, look, if you find this stuff entertaining or useful or anything like that, please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing, or tell your friends. And um, thank you for your patience. Thank you for uh, coming to my site. Uh, I know that uh, I really don't deserve uh, the attention of some, some of you guys are just, uh, ladies and gentlemen, are just wonderful. And I appreciate it, and I thank you. So other than that, have a blessed day.